Hi, art family. Welcome to my studio. It's Dina Tollefson, and I'm so glad that you're here today. Today's going to be a great video. I'll be sharing with you the process that I use to go from plain canvas to finish painting, all of the steps that I use, the layering steps that I use. So uh, these are some of the paint brushes we'll use in today's video. Uh, everything from a liner brush and some filberts to some flat and wash brushes. So the layering process that I follow is a six step process and beginning with the first one is toning the canvas. So if you're like me and you come across a white canvas, it can be intimidating. And so by adding, um, I, I tone every canvas the same way. I use a fluid acrylic. Uh, this one is golden and a yellow ochre color. And I use yellow ochre because it is a um, nice neutral and pretty much all colors look good next to yellow ochre. Um, it's really a true neutral. Um, I'm using a super wide, um, this is a three inch paintbrush, and just getting the color all across the canvas everywhere that you, uh, that you see it. And I'm using a fluid acrylic because um, it already is going to be um, more liquid and easy to go across the canvas. I just want to cover the canvas and start to get a sense of motion going, a sense of energy, and just letting the paintbrush dance across the canvas. So the next step in my layering process is to draw in the subject. So I'll either use a pencil um, or I will use, as I did in this case, I just use a thin layer of the acrylic paint and just draw in um, the shapes. If I don't like uh, what I've got, I can erase it by taking another paintbrush that's just dipped in water and before it dries, just kind of uh, wipe it out if I don't like it. But that's how I'm just drawing in the basic shapes, um, just using the paint. So the next step I follow in all of my paintings is the first layer of color. So now that I've got the, the canvas toned, I'll go in and start establishing the um, the largest areas of color and I try and um, establish the dark areas and the light areas first so that I can judge against the middle tone. I'm trying to get a variety of lights, middles, and dark colors for a dynamic painting. I'll lay in my lightest colors first against my darkest colors and see if I have a dynamic enough color scheme. If I find that when I'm working on this it's not bold enough then I'll go and make adjustments uh, early on. But this first layer of color will give me an idea of where the painting is going and if it's going to give the color punch that I'm looking for. So now adding in some more colors, um, on a Masterson Stay Wet palette um, and I'm going to mix up a purple that we can use in the center of our daylilies. So titanium white and dioxazine purple and I'll be mixing those with a palette knife that keeps your paintbrushes clean. If your little tip is if you're painting um, or making a large puddle of color it's easier to mix using a palette knife. Get a little bit of the yellow ochre and that is going to mix in with the purple and the white and create a nice neutral color. Adding a little bit more of the uh, dioxazine purple, we can get like three values of, of purple to use. And now just nice and easy into the center of the flower. I'm using a flat wash brush. This is an American painter. It's also important to clean your brush each time. I like to um, keep clean water um, at all times uh, when painting so that the colors don't get muddy and I uh, can control what color is uh, mixed in with what. So now um, adding in the lightest yellow on the daylilies. lilies. 
So just scrubbing this uh, this color in the diarylide yellow and uh, primary yellow. And this painting I'm creating here is for the Growing Garden Art Challenge. I hope that you will participate in the challenge and I can't wait to see your artwork. So the fourth step of um, my painting process is I add additional layers of color. So as an example here, I'm going to put a white highlight on the petals of, the, of our daylily. And I'm just waiting until that yellow that was underneath. So we had the um, underpainting, that was this first step. And then we had below that, we had the um, toned canvas and, the, and then the first layers of color. And now I'm just adding a white on top of that and um, allowing the paint to dry below lets me put this layer of scumble, this layer of color, which uh, scumbling just means that I'm just doing a dry brushing technique over the top and I'm allowing little sketchy areas of the color below to peek through. And I'm holding the paintbrush at an angle so that the tips of the brush are just barely making contact with the paint. Just going a nice and free and easy, loose interpreta interpretation of a daylily. What I'm really trying to focus on here with these flowers, and I've named this painting Together, um, I'm picturing that these two daylilies are a couple that is in a loving relationship. And I feel like they're almost a cross between starfish and flowers. They're in the garden and you can see that they're holding hands and they're feeling full of life and exuberant and just everything that I think of when I think about gardens. So now that we have the dark area of the um, foliage established, I want to go in and layer uh, a second layer on top and again just scumbling this um, dry paint over the top of the um, when I say dry meaning I didn't dip it in water first I just took it directly from the tube but I'm um, wanting to show the light areas and the dark areas so showing where the flower interacts with the foliage and casts a shadow on there and how that interacts with the areas of the foliage in the sunlight so you can do this all in one step, but for me it's easier if I do it in layers. Now the same thing um, here with adding some um, alizarin crimson and now a naphthol red. And this naphthol red light I mixed with titanium white to make this kind of light pink color. And then alizarin crimson in the dark shadowy area, recessed area of the flower and then out in the recurved areas of the petals. So when you're making your own paintings, you know, you'll want to decide um, how many layers you want to put into your painting. You can really do as many layers as you like, as long as you just uh, let the layers below dry and acrylic dries very quickly. So uh, when you're doing the same thing in oil paint, um, you just have to allow more time in between. But but this technique that I'm doing here can be done in acrylic or in oil. So just continuing to add layer upon layer. And I'm really focusing here on the expressive jubilance of the flowers. We'll get that paintbrush rinsed out. And now this uh, area right where their hands are touching, these two flowers. Um, this is an important area of the painting. I want to um, really show that, that how they're interacting. So on daylilies, um, there are these centers of the daylilies. Um, they're called uh, the stamens and it consists of an anther and a filament. So I'm gonna draw in the filaments. Those are the long, thin, um, tube-like structures. 
and then that holds the anther, which is the, the pollen part of the, of the day lily. So I'm going to get a couple of them, and using a, a, a filbert brush, I'm just going to use one mark for each of the anthers. So it's just got one stroke only. And I'm going to uh, put them at different angles, because on the flower, they're, all, they're not lined up like soldiers. They're kind of at their own angles, and getting those, uh, getting those put in. Now the uh, step five of any painting that I do um, is the signature. So what I'll do is take a liner brush, and that is basically a very thin brush with a long, uh, long bristles, and uh, it's used just for signatures. You can also use it for details, but um, but I mostly use them for signatures. And I'll take the uh, acrylic paint and then um, water it down with just a small amount of water, and so it's the consistency of ink and then go in and do my signature. If you try and use paint that is too thick, you're gonna, um, it's gonna be very difficult to write your name. So you wanna make sure it's thin enough that the paint flows as though it's an ink, or kind of a, like a thick milk kind of a texture or um, thick uh, consistency. There we go. And then the next step, and the last step that I do, is the, um, is the Daubism layers. So in this painting, I will not be showing you the Daubism. That'll be the next part. So I invite you to come back and here's the finished underpainting of uh, Daylilies with the title Together. I hope that you'll come back again and watch part two where I add all of the Daubism layered texture to the top, painting with palette knives and with spoons, transforming this underpainting into a three-dimensional, low-relief sculpture type of effect um, as a painting. So until next time, this is Dina Tollefson, and all my best to you. Bye-bye.